Good afternoon. I am Dr. John Nordling, professor of exegetical theology at Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne. And it's my great privilege to be with you today as we uh, do the propers for proper uh, 23. And the text is Luke 17, 11 to 19. And uh, I would like to begin with the collect for the, for the day. So let's pray that, and then I will discuss various things about the collect itself. Almighty God, you show mercy to your people in all their troubles. Grant us always to recognize your goodness. Give thanks for your compassion and praise your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So one of the things I like to do uh, when I'm called upon to uh, go through the gospel lesson is start with the collect. Uh, it seems to be a pattern that works pretty well for me. And you'll see that this collect already anticipates the themes of the gospel lesson today. For example, show mercy. I mean, here we have a spectacular example of of God in Christ Jesus showing mercy to the ten lepers. And uh, so the, the petition is that we, that grant us always to recognize your goodness. And as you know, nine of the uh, uh, ten lepers did not recognize God's goodness, but there was one that returned with thanks. And that's the next kind of petition, give thanks for your compassion. So we have the example of the uh, thankful uh, leper. And then praise your holy name. And we'll see that one of the wonderful formulas is doxadzon ton theon, glorifying God. Okay, that the, uh, that the one repentant or thankful leper does. And then, of course, that we have uh, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. So, you know, what you could do if you're at a loss as to how to preach the text, is just simply use the outline that's given in the collect. Um, I had a professor at St. At St. Louis, Bill Schmelder, who used to tell us uh, when I was a fourth year student that that's what he did when he was a pastor, is just preach the collects, because you have a very fine outline here. Um, always to recognize your goodness give thanks for your compassion, and praise your holy name. I mean, it's, you've got a three-point sermon right there, and then you can use this text as well as the other texts, um, and you could do that very well. Just, you know, if, if, you've, if you've preached around and you kind of want something more to do. Anyway, let's now turn, John, to the, uh, to the text itself. And uh, here we have it. Um, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, Luke 17, 11 to 19, and we have this classic uh, Lucan saying, kai egenito, okay, and I think you can see this if I show the cursor here, kai egenito, and then um, you uh, have this phrase right there, and then... Um, you have in verse 14, uh, where is that? There it is. Kai egenito, right? Um, and they're kind of linked uh, this way. So you have that Lucan frame, and it came to pass. You know, Bible ease that, that Luke likes to do. And it's often uh, <laughs> noted and kind of... Um, even uh, satirized by especially non-Christians. In The Simpsons, you know, Ned, the Christian guy, he, he's always speaking in this manner, but you have it here. It's a Septuagintalism that, that Luke inherits, of course, from Matthew first, but then Luke takes it over. Now, how do I turn this off, or how do I erase this? Can you just tell me quickly, John? Right there, okay. All right, so get rid of that. Then uh, the next thing I want to show you is this. Um, I have it uh, underlined, Ento por Uis thy Jerusalem. 
So as this is an articular infinitive, n plus the dative, so and and the and the uh, the accusative or the the subject of this infinitive would of course be in the accusative case. So and it came to pass while they were going to Jerusalem, right? Um, uh, so an, an autus or something like that is missing there. And so you have, this is part of the journey motif that Dr. Just points out so well in his commentary. You have uh, en to por us thy ace Jerusalem here, then in verse 14, go show yourself. So you have por uthentes, uh, here we have a aorist uh, deponent participle that is used um, really as an imperative. And then finally, in the very last part, uh, the, the last uh, verse 19 of the text, you, you have up, uh, go, uh, go. So get up and go, okay? So por, por uo, second person singular present um, deponent imperative, okay? So it's part of that, uh, that journey motif that you have. And I, I checked uh, Dr. Just's commentary and he points out that this is the third travel notice um, in the gospel. You have very similar formula here with the articular infinitive in Luke 51, Luke 9, 51, also in 13, 22, and also in, in Luke 19.28. So this is part of the, to be on the road with Jesus, right? And you'll, you'll recall that in Luke's gospel, the Lucan travelogue, as it's called, really starts with 9.51, and he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and then it ends in 19.28, where you have the triumphal entry of our Lord into Jerusalem. So um, this is kind of a loose section. Jesus is somewhere between um, Galilee and, and Jerusalem, and we'll have another clue about that in a verse or two. Uh, well, it says that. And he himself, chi uh, autas di ercato dia meson. So he himself was going, there's your imperfect third person singular, through the middle or uh, this dia plus the accusative is problematic. We expect it to be dia plus the genitive. Through the middle, uh, Samareas kai Galileas, through the middle of Samaria and Galilee, okay? And I uh, went to the trouble of looking that up on a map and discovered that there's not a whole lot there. <laughs> there aren't any major uh, cities. Um, and that's the perfect place where you'd expect there to be uh, ten lepers who were uh, obviously living off the land and in bad straits. Okay, um, all right. So then um, uh, that kind of sets the the frame for the text, and then it and then the text goes on. Kai ace er ko menu autu. So classic genitive absolute, and as he was going into a tina komain a certain village. So, um, which village? Well, we don't know. It's a certain village. Uh, perhaps it was known to Luke's original audience. Um, sometimes that's what uh, tis and tea means when it's used as a, notice that this is enclitic. It throws its accent onto the, uh, onto the preceding word. So, ace has, uh, see the, the, the acute, uh, accent there, because by rights that should be a grob, into a certain village, and then finally we get to the uh, to the main verb, op ente sen auto. So ten lepers, ten leprous men uh, met him, and this auto is very weakly attested. Um, the editors of UBS decided to put a bracket around it, but there's no really text note about it in the UBS, and not about it, much about it either, even in uh, Nestle Oland. But apontao is strongly transitive, and it's also a compound, and compounds often pattern with the dative case, or sometimes with the genitive. 
So they met him, uh, ten leprous men. Uh, Hoy este son por youthen, who stood at a distance, or from afar off, as it says, okay? So, of course, I have to uh, say something about this word lepros. Um, for one thing, it's very, very common in, in the Synoptic Gospels. I have Matthew 8, 2, Matthew 10, 8, and 11, 5. Then it's in Mark 1, 40. And then uh, Luke 4, 27, and 7, 22. And all of these passages, if you look them all up, and I got these texts, I think, where did I get them from? Um, uh, Moulton and Gieden or uh, BDAG, Blast of, uh, Bauer, Danker, Arndt, Gingrich. But if you look them up, that will give you a sense of, of how it's used. But they really all go back to Leviticus 13 and 14, which are regulations regarding infectious skin diseases. So you have to scotch that idea that you have of leprosy formed in you by watching the old Ben-Hur, the old Ben-Hur, right, where um, uh, Judah Ben-Hur's uh, mother and uh, sister are infected with uh, horrible, horrible leprosy. I mean, it could have been that way. We really don't know. But the, the frame uh, of reference would seem to be Leviticus 13 and 14, um, which are a whole bunch of different types of skin diseases, kind of dandruff, really bad dandruff or scabrousness. I looked the word up in uh, BDAG and it said scaly, okay, scaly. Um, uh, and if you look at uh, Leviticus 13 and 14, it talks about white skin and swelling, you know, tumorous type of things. But the, the upshot of this is that they're all, it's all ceremonial uncleanness. So not only was this um, something that uh, they had to live with, but they were ceremonial unclean, so they had to be outside the bounds of, of civilization at that time, living in the countryside, uh, probably in very wretched estate. Okay? So who stood afar off, and then we have their pitiable voice raised in 13, and they themselves lifted up from Iro, lifted up a voice saying, Jesu epistata elei son hemos. So, O oh Jesus, vocative uh, master, another vocative, and then this imperative, elei son hemos, have pity on us or pity us. Okay, so a number of things. One is this word for master, ep epistata. It's only in Luke, you know, he could have used um, kyrios, or he could have used despotes, but you have this epistates, and um, I really don't know why, um, but this word is, uh, was used by the disciples elsewhere in Luke. It's in Luke 8.24, Luke 8.45, Luke 9.33, and Luke 9.49. Um, but nowhere else, okay, so it's a Lucan, it's a Lucan um, title. Um, like, for example, remember when uh, Peter caught the, that great uh, draught of fishes, and, uh, and, and Peter says, O oh, oh Master, okay, so ep, ep, epistates. So, um, it, it's Lucan, I guess we have to leave it there. Then we have this formula, Eleison, have pity on us. So, you know, of course, um, Kyria eleison, Christa eleison, Kyria eleison. It's a liturgical phrase. It goes back, I think, to, to Luke, okay? And it's, again, very Lucan. It's in Luke 16.24, Luke 17.13, and 18.33, all right? If you check it, if you check it in um, Moulton and Gieden and... Uh, and, and BDAG, you'll see that this is the, the Lucan way, and we have taken it into our liturgy as I showed you with the prayer that we prayed at the beginning. And having seen it, uh, verse 14, he said to them, Por euthentes epidexata he autois toi hierusen. So go show yourselves to the priests. Okay? So here it, here's the text. For euthentes epideixate tois tois hierusen. So those are, of course, the people um, probably, where, who are these priests? Well, 
if you go back to Leviticus 13 and 14, these are the guys that would inspect those that had the scabrous skin diseases. Were they necessarily associated with the temple hierarchy and in the city? I don't know. I mean, they could have been a, a parish priests, if you will, in the hinterland of Israel, in, in the synagogues. I'm, I'm just not so sure about that, but um, that is the rule that, that, they, that they function, uh, a priest. Uh, okay, and, and then we have uh, Kai again, Ato again, and it came to pass... Um, and another articular infinitive, in to hoop again autus, and in their going, hoop again is a present, so ongoing activity, in their going, ek hafaris they son, they were purified. Okay, so you have this um, passive, uh, ek hafaris they son, uh, in this verse, at the end of uh, 14, I'm going to underline that. And then you also have exactly the same word in uh, 17, right here, okay? Same exact word, see that? See that connection there? Um, they were healed, and here it's very tempting to say something about a theological passive. They were healed by God, you know, hippo to the ooh. And this is a miracle, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing, they were purified of their sin. Now, how do I erase this again? I go here and then here. So I, I uh, showed that. Um, they were purified. And then we have uh, this, this focus of attention upon one of them, but one from them, heos de exauton, having seen it own that he is healed. This is Iaomai, um, uh, returned, hupes strepsen metaphones megales with a great voice. And of course, this um, with a great voice recalls uh, all of the, uh, the uh, uh, lifted up their voices back in verse 13, right? Where they all stand together and they lift up their voice. You've got that kind of connection there uh, with a great voice. And this, of course, before it's, it's pitiable wretchedness here, we think of the liturgy, you know, the thanksgiving of the people of God who give thanks to the Lord because of their, their holiness in Christ, their forgiveness of sins that we have in the means of grace, and so forth. There's very, various ways you can develop this homiletically um, with a great voice. And then we have this, um, this other kind of uh, liturgical, quasi-liturgical formula Doxadzon ton theon, glorifying God, and that's very much like down in verse 18, dunai doxon uh, to theo, right? You got this, this connection. Um, I, I've done some work on these. So this is a very Lucan phrase, okay? This idea of glorifying God is in Luke 5, 25 and 26, in Luke 7, 16, 13, 13, 17, 15, that's the, the text we're doing now, 18, 43, and 23, 47. It's also very similar in Acts 11, 18, and 21, 20. And really not anywhere else, okay? So you have that, uh, that, that formula, glorifying God, very much fits with what we prayed in the, um, in the, in the, in the collect for the day. Uh, and he fell upon his face, uh, para, para tus podos autu, at the feet of Jesus. Uh, there's a, I didn't track that phrase down, but um, to be at the feet of Jesus is another common uh, phrase that we have of people that have been healed um, or um, people that are, are repentant. Okay, you have that, that, that posture. He, He's thrown himself on the ground. Um, and then you have this phrase, oi caught his stone out toe. Okay? So giving thanks to him. Um, another uh, quasi uh, liturgical phrase. Now, this oi karisteo plus out toe with a dative is in Luke 17 16. Then another uh, place you find it is plus to the o with the dative. 
That's in Acts 28, 15, 1 Corinthians 14, 18, Philippians 1, 3, Colossians 1, 3, and 12, Colossians 3, 17, and Philemon 4, okay? And this oikaristao language is associated especially with the Pauline thanksgiving, right? Several of these are from that. And, um, you know, one of the questions is, is it always... Um, what exactly does it mean when it's talking about thanksgiving? Is this kind of an emotion? Is this gratitude? Now, sometimes you get the impression like that Acts 28, 15, it says that Paul, right before he's about to enter Rome, he uh, is thankful to God, okay? Uh, right before he, uh, he's in the form of Appius. And I've preached on this that maybe Paul celebrates a Lord's Supper, okay? You have this idea and the, the association of, Oikaristeo with the Eucharist, if you will. So that liturgical, um, sacramental notion, I think, is always there. I, I, it would be limiting just to, to limit it, it, just to connect it with the, uh, with the, uh, with with our gratitude. Okay, I, I, I think more is going on there if you check the, the passages. Now, where was I? We're running out of time. I don't want to go too much longer. And he himself was a Samaritan. And in response, Jesus said, and, and here Jesus is very gruff, okay? This is, a, this is kind of a, an amazing thing. Um, Jesus says, uh, and in response, Jesus said, were not the ten uh, healed, okay? And then he says, hoida eneat pu, the, the nine, where are they? Are almost like, where the H are they, okay? <laughs> That's, that's what the Greek is really doing, and this is totally missing in your English translation. Then this is even trickier here in verse 18. We're not there found, having returned to give glory to God, except this foreigner. Now look at this ha alogenes tutus. This hutos is the demonstrative pronoun that follows it. It's in predicate position. But this hutas is what you'd call deictic, uh, kind of contemptuous, like Jesus is contemptuous of this one foreigner, you know. It's really funny. Jesus has kind of an attitude here. And then in verse 19, and he said to him, uh, anastas, por you, por you, so on your feet, go, he pistis you ses o kense, thy faith has saved thee from sozo. In other words, sozo, um, which is very Lucan, Luke 8, 48, um, Luke 17, 19, Luke 18, 42. Check art just. So uh, just has developed the whole theology of, of, of wholeness, but it says, thy faith has saved you. Obviously, the faith that this man has is God's faith, right? It's not his own kind of willingness to believe, but it's the faith worked in him, if you will, by word and sacrament, by the means of grace. Now, that's about all that I have time for. Um, I've given you a few uh, live wires, things that you want to follow up on. Um, you are better preaching, preach, that's why you're in the parish and I'm at the seminary, but you're, you're the preachers of the church, and I've given you some, some lumber that I hope you can work with and, and bring this uh, for the benefit of God's people. May you have great joy as you work with the scripture and develop this, uh, this Sunday. Thank you.